Okay, with all these tips today, you're gonna hear kids in the background because that's what life is like as a mom. And um, that is probably the most real thing that you'll get to see throughout the day as I share these mom, first time mom tips as I'm a mom of four. So I'm at the beginning of the day and just through my day, as the day happens, I'm gonna be sharing my top tips for you as a first time mom. I can vividly remember what that was like Something sounds like it just broke. I can vividly remember being overwhelmed, excited, um, feeling very inadequate, all these feelings. So I've been there, but also, you know, now I'm on my fourth kid and there are some things I wish I knew. So I'm gonna share those with you today. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with a really practical one. The first practical one I would share is literally coconut oil for everything. Coconut oil for diaper rash if your baby has a diaper rash put some coconut oil on it but the other thing is consider changing their diapers like if they're constantly having a bad diaper rash something's up so get some better baby wipes some better diapers get the reusable like breast pads that go in i got the bamboobies now some people are going to say get the throwaway ones yeah you could definitely have some of those in a pinch but i got enough of the bamboobies the heart shaped ones because they can form to the way your boob is actually shaped as opposed to like the circle ones just look lumpy in your bra um but those are great because you're going to be sitting just you know doing your thing and then all of a sudden you're going to start leaking and it's not pleasant so the bamboobies are awesome okay so the next one is after you have your baby take a week off like take a week off my midwife tried to tell me uh, with my first one i didn't listen i had family out in town and i was tour guide out in la and i wanted to be with them too and show them a good time but honestly your pelvic floor is so stretched it's crazy and it's actually going to take a lot longer to heal you're going to bleed longer you have a huge wound on the inside of your body from where your placenta was on your uterine wall so just take a break all the housework will be there in a week to meet you, ready for you to do. So I didn't do any housework for a week. Okay, if all else fails and you cannot calm your baby down, one idea is to just give them a bath or take them outside. Goodness, that's a bad cough. Give them a bath or take them outside. I don't know why those two things seem to help so much. Goodness, that's a bad cough but change of scenery and then just add water is what some moms say like if it's just a bad day or a meltdown or just craziness add water that is that has been so helpful for me okay keep a basket of snacks and water where you most often nurse your baby i really love chomps i love do you see a baby that's you <laughs> Um, I love the dried mango strips from Trader Joe's. I love the Cook chomps. Up. Cook up. Cook up. I love chomps. And um, you could do like some good crackers or something. Just keep a basket of snacks and some waters. Matt jokes that it was like that movie where there was like water everywhere to fight the aliens because I, the moment I would sit down to nurse, I would instantly want some water. So just plant it all over the house. Maybe a couple of like hydro flasks or something. And then when you sit down and get the baby completely positioned, you're not gonna be like, crap, I need water. The next one is find a mom mentor. This has made, made literally all the difference for me. Finding an older, wiser woman I trust is literally why I called my channel Girl Teach Me because I believe in mentorship so much. Getting a mom and watching how she parents is literally gonna be so helpful to see what you wanna do and what you don't wanna do. Mommy. Oh, you, you want that? Here, why don't you use this, okay? No. Say no thank you, no thank you. So get yourself a mentor. If you see a mom around at church or you know at a park or whatever, just ask questions and ask if you can get together and get coffee and get to know them. Yeah. All right, it's a hot mess in this kitchen. I'm gonna clean while we chat. Another thing is take a legit long break from sex. I know that the doctor tells you this, but even especially if you've had a C-section, really either scenario, take a break. We took a 10 to 12 week break, which may seem ridiculous, but you have no idea how stretched out your pelvic floor is and just how much you need a break. So just if nobody else is telling you to take a break, just take a break. It's okay. It'll be, it'll be there for you when you get back. There's other things you can do in the meantime. Take a break. All of my babies got a rash. All of my babies got a rash after they were born. 
it was normal it went away but the first time it absolutely freaked me out i didn't know if they had a skin rash or what where was a good friend to tell me that it was okay but it's i don't know if it's the vernix coming out of their skin or what but like literally like head to toe rash and then within a week they healed up but for a week there they're a little rough looking you know what i mean just looks only a mama can love but then it was fine Okay, people are just going to be really negative about pregnancy, Mommy, marriage, Mommy, motherhood. Mommy. I don't know why Mommy. people share negative things. Maybe because, two reasons. I think they they either have got the victim mindset or the villain mindset. And they're, they're villainizing by sharing all their horrible stories. So number one, but this is probably a two-parter. Let's do a two-parter. One, don't tell people your bad parts of your stories. If they're bad parts of your stories, that doesn't necessarily mean that's gonna to happen to somebody else. And the other thing is, don't listen, tune them out if they're not giving you encouraging words. And that leads me to my next point, don't share your pearls with pigs. And what I mean by that is if you have a plan to have your baby a certain way, have your baby at a certain location, do certain things that are maybe a little out of the box, Breastfeed. Don't breastfeed. Just if you have somebody in your life, just one second. Good job putting your hand on me. Let me put that back on. Got to put Luigi's arm back on. If you have, um, Mario's back on. Oh gosh, you're, you're right. I'm so sorry. If you have somebody in your life who's really critical, talk about the weather. Talk about neutral things, but don't share your your deepest desires for your motherhood or your family. Just Share those with really inner circle trusted people that are going to give you wisdom, not scary advice. Okay, another fact, well, it was a fact for me, a tip for you, is that a swing is really helpful, the zero to three months, and you can get a really, really cheap one off Marketplace. I know they're not going to be the most aesthetically pleasing things ever. I think usually the ugliest ones work the best. Um, I had the Mama Roo. It was okay. Somebody gifted it to me. And if somebody gives it to you, I, th I still think it's good. But you can also just get a Marketplace one. It's the swinging and the swaying that feels like the womb. And it's very, very soothing for them. And I know it seems horrible to set them down. But honestly, it's going to give you a moment to do the dishes. It's going to save your back a little bit. And it's going to be very soothing to baby. That leads me into my next point. And that is buy as much stuff as you can use. I mean, baby stuff is My just, baby. yeah, your baby. Baby stuff is hardly used at all. I mean, very, baby. baby, very short amount of time. So baby, just, baby. maybe if you really want like the, you know, the trendy cute stuff, buy a couple of outfits you really, really love, but then just get the big stuff used. Nobody know, nobody will know, nobody will care. So yeah. Buy used when you can, and for the really nice things that you think you're going to use for the long haul, maybe you splurge on those or put those uh, as your most um, fave on your baby registry. Hey, I know, I know this is going to, you're going to feel like maybe you're going to lose yourself during this time, and I have certainly been there. I have felt very lost and dark. There's some things you can do to combat that is to keep learning. So, you know, if you're home with your baby, use this time to learn to make something new, like learn how to make great broth or bread or good soups like add to your cooking arsenal that leads me into my next point is you really really are going to need to learn how to cook because, because these kids i'm telling you are going to freaking eat they eat so you need to learn how to cook if you do not learn to know how to cook um, one of my favorite cookbooks that's been really helpful for me and it's pretty easy is just ingredients i'll link that down below i've learned a lot from her i also love watching farmhouse on Dune. i've learned a lot of things uh looks pretty good you need some jeans we're, head, we're heading to church. Let's not fight. We're not going to fight about it. Farmhouse on Boone. I've learned a ton of things from her. I always check her recipes. So yeah, I know some things might seem really, really hard, but if you just start from right here over time, you are going to be a great, great cook. I was a terrible cook when I first got married and probably still a really bad one when I first had my first baby, but by now I make all my own broths for soup and I've just slowly added to my cooking arsenal. Okay, I'm getting ready to head out the door and my next tip is it's gonna take a lot longer than it probably ever has to get out the door. I'm not being negative, I'm just being real. That there's always gonna be some like unexpected thing, you know, like I might forget to nurse the baby before we go and then I'm like, oh, it's time to eat or they might have a blowout or something like that. So just plan some extra time 
when you're getting ready to go somewhere, I know it's easier said than done. Like you could pack the bag the night before. I'm not really like a planner type like that, but definitely allowing more margin or buffer time is gonna take the anxiety and stress level down. Also, if you're late, your excuse is your baby. I mean, you've got a new baby, it's okay. You don't, you don't even have to go anywhere if you don't want to. It's like a honeymoon period, stay in if you want. But if you are gonna go, just give yourself more time. Okay, so getting in the car, heading to church. Here's my next one for you. Okay, so here's the deal on schedules. I feel like there's two extremes. I call them mommy camps. There's mommy camps in the mom world. And they're, shh, one second. Uh-uh, they're often really extreme. And I have more to say on that. First thing I would say is look up schedules for your baby's age. You do not have to follow them to a T. It's just helpful to know what it could look like, what a rhythm could be. I did not do that with my first and I did not understand that he was tired sometimes. I thought that he just wanted to nurse all the time. And while I had great milk supply because I did nurse all the time, I think nursing a lot is great. I just think if you could look up the schedule just to have like a ballpark in your mind of what it could be, that's really, really, really helpful. And then if you choose to follow the schedule, fine. If you choose not to follow the schedule, fine. I probably found myself somewhere in the middle. You know what I mean? Um, but once I figured out you could go look up a schedule like on Pinterest or whatever, different ones, it just was like mind blowing, you know? It just really was. You ready to get out? You want daddy? Okay. All right, I'm back from church and here to give you more mom tips. And I actually talked Matt into coming and giving you a couple of tips. So this is my husband, Matt. And what would you say are your top tips for new moms? Because you can remember what it was like for me when I first became a mom and how overwhelmed I was, how much I didn't, I just, y'all didn't know anything. It was, it was bad. So what's your top tips? Yeah, first one I'd say is give yourself grace. It, it took you a year to kind of get to the point where you're birthing a baby. Well, it's going to take your body a year kind of recovering from it with its nutrients and lack of sleep. That's okay. Uh, the other one is use the biggest, most underutilized word in the English language. No. Yeah. Use, use no. It's okay yeah. to say no to stuff. Yeah, it's okay to just rest and recuperate. And I think you're absolutely right that... Don't feel pressured to be at all these places because it's just almost like this honeymoon period of time mm -hmm. where you can just be at home and enjoy baby and it's a lot to get out of the house. It's good to get out of the house sometimes. But. Yeah, and it's also like this period of your your family's growing and becoming new. If it's your first mom, I think the first time, then man, your world has turned upside down in a great way, but also you're learning what does it look like to carry your baby out and plan and you know be on time and stuff like that. So yeah. give yourself grace upon grace upon grace yeah yeah it's a whole new career you're starting and if you don't know what you're doing nobody else does either so um, you're gonna feel a lot more proficient at it I mean now that I have my fourth I'm a lot more proficient now if we were to have another baby I would still struggle and I'm sure some new area but just like any other job you're gonna feel like more of an expert as you go so mm -hmm. thanks babe no problem. okay there's so many other things I want to say like so many but I'll table it here, maybe it can be another video some other time, but my friend said that this was one of the most helpful things that she heard, and it's so true, that breastfeeding is gonna take some time. It's a learning curve, and so a lot of times people prep for labor, but they don't prep for breastfeeding, and it's a thing that can cause a lot of feelings of failure, all of that. What we really need to know is it can take some time, and you might need some help, and there's no shame in that. Also, it can take a day or two, even longer, for your milk to come in. And baby's tummy is oh, like literally the size. Her diaper off. Oh, she's taking her diaper off. Is literally the size of a marble. It's so so little. So, just give yourself a lot of grace. Be drinking lots of water to help that milk come in. But it's just something that's not talked about a lot. And so, just give it some time. I would love if you tell me down below some of the things that you've heard that have been really helpful for you, whether it's just the things that you got or getting your mindset right for motherhood. And I'll see you again in my video next week, which is gonna be all about just taking you along as I do some baking and cooking and things like that, and just kind of show you what my week looks like as I am cooking for my family. So I'll see you in that video next week. From generation to generation, passed down through every age, there's a
story of a savior whose love will never change. 